Good day. So, our topic for today is partnership formation. Since we already discussed introduction to partnership, so we know that partnership formation is when a two partner or a two person combine to form a partnership. So, mostly, this one speak about of the contribution of the partners and how it is valued in the partnership. Okay? So, let's take a leap and go to our journey. So, what does the partner can contribute? So, number one, it's cash or money. So, if it's cash or money, we don't have any problem because we know the value of cash is what has been contributed to the partnership. Next, it would be properties. But take note, properties is different valuation. You have the acquisition cost, you have the book value, and the fair market value. So, for partnership, we consider the fair market value. Well, unless in the absence of fair market value, we could use the book value. Because the acquisition cost is the fair market value of this property on the time it was being bought by the partner or by that person who, bought, who buy the properties. Next, we also have property worth mortgage. Why? Property with, mor with mortgage, meaning that the partnership will assume the loan in this property. It could also be the... Or the partner would not assume. So, meaning as if it was only the properties that has been contributed by the partners and without the mortgage because the mortgage remain the personal liability of the contributing partner. Okay? So, there are two kinds. If it's mortgage, it could be assumed by the partnership or it couldn't be assumed or would not be assumed by the partner. Okay? And next, we also have the industry, the services. Okay? But the, so, for the valuation of the properties and the mortgage, it will always be the fair market value. But for the industry, since you cannot quantify the skills and the hours of that person, it was not recorded in the partner, okay, in the partnership. So, case one, both both partner contributed money. So, we don't have any accounting problem because we know money has its fair market value and it, it is not affected by the decrease or increase of its value or the demonetization very insignificant so let's assume that on january 30 2020 igna and adolfo decided to form a partnership igna invested cash 25000 and adolfo invested 50000 so what does the partner receive partnership what does the partnership receive its cash and it is 75000 so we record cash 75000 and then we credit Adolfo's capital because Adolfo invested fifty thousand and Ignace capital twenty five thousand. So explanation to record the in partnership initial investment. Okay. Okay. So let's think. What if the partnership contribute money and property? Take note. We said that property should be valued at fair market value. So let's assume that on January 30, twenty twenty, Huyos and Copili agreed to form a partnership. We just invested cash fifty thousand in a computer with an acquisition cost of fifty thousand in a fair market value of thirty five thousand. Kapili invested a land with an acquisition cost of fifty thousand, book value of sixty thousand, and currently sold in the market at seventy five thousand in a cash of ten thousand. Take note that the entry would now be cash fifty thousand for Huyus. Computer thirty five thousand for who use and then Kapili cash ten thousand seventy five thousand because it stated that it is currently sold at seventy five thousand. So currently sold means also fair market value. Just like computer fair market value is thirty thousand. Okay. So our entry. So our entry, this one is compound entry, but we would also do the single entry accounting. Compound entry would be easier. So we have cash, debit cash, take note. We have who used fifty thousand and then Kapili ten thousand. Therefore the partnership has now sixty thousand cash. So we debit cash sixty thousand and computer valuation is thirty five thousand. So we have computer thirty five thousand and then land seventy five thousand market value seventy five thousand and then we credit Kapili's capital eighty five thousand total of her contribution and who used capital 85,000. So, to record the initial the initial investment of the partners. A partner's initial investment. Okay? So, we also do our single entry accounting. 
So here is our single entry accounting. We debit cash, 50,000, computer 35,000, and who use capital 80,000 to record all who use contribution. And to record all Kapilis contribution, we debit cash 10,000, land 75,000, and credit Kapilis capital contribution 85,000. It's just the same with our compound entry. Okay? Okay? So we have case 3 is one sole proprietor merged in the partnership. Take note that for this video, we would focus on only one sole proprietor merged in the partnership for case 3. But a partnership can be created, number one, our case 1, both partners contributed money. Case 2, it could be partners contributing cash and a properties. But take note, the properties is always valued at fair market value. So you just had to check what are other means to call or to assume that it is also fair market value. It could be current valuation, can be sold in the market, currently appraised. Those are the fair market value. Then, both partners contributed properties and money. It could also be one sole proprietor contributing its, its business and the other one is money. Or two sole proprietor combine their, what, their business to form a partnership. But for this one, since even if it's one sole proprietor, two sole proprietor, most of the problem in the formation is the valuation. So we just focus on the valuations okay so let's just assume that on january 30 2020 igna and jane agreed to form a partnership igna is a software trader while jane is a programmer jane is to invest her expertise cash of hundred thousand land with an acquisition cost of two hundred fifty thousand in 2010 and a current market valuation of five hundred thousand Igna's balance sheet of his business is as far. Okay, so let's see Ignacio's balance sheet. So Ignacio has a cash in his business hundred forty five thousand, accounts receivable seventy five thousand, allowance for bad debts hundred one thousand five hundred, supplies eighteen thousand, computer equipment two hundred fifty thousand, accumulated depreciation ten thousand, fixtures and furniture. 350,000 accumulated depreciation, zero salaries payable, 100,000 unearned revenue, 21,500 and Ignace capital, 705,000. So, total of 838,000. But take note for the sole proprietorship, since we assume that it's only balance sheet, so we assume the books are all closed, we had to revalue. We have to check its fair market value. That would be the first. So let's see. So Jane and Igna agreed on the following to arrive at the fair valuation of the asset of a sole proprietor. So number one, allowance for bad debts should be 10% of the accounts receivable. And take note, if you already has this fin uh, financial accounting, if the 10% allowance for bad debts is on the balance sheet account, it is also what you also generate is a balance sheet account, which is a balance uh, allowance for bad debt. But if it's based on sales, then you also generate an income statement account, which is the expense portion. But this one, since it's allowance for bad debt, 10% accounts receivable, so we determine the ending balance of the allowance for bad debt, which, I which is also your balance sheet account, okay? Next, supply has a fair market value of 20000 Why the supply increases? Maybe there's a wrong valuations. Okay? So we have fixtures and furniture are 15%, 15 depreciated. And take note, it's also the same under our, if it's balance sheet account, then the balance sheet follow. Okay? So, which is accumulated depreciation. And then, they said that partnership will assume the liability of the sole proprietorship. So, let's do the accounting portion. So, allowance for bad debt. So, let's try. So, you said that the allowance for bad debt is 10%. And we know that the accounts receivable is 75,000. So, 75,000, 10%. We arrive, the balance of allowance for bad debt is 7,500. Because 10% of... 75,000 is 75. And take note, we already have the balance for our information in the balance sheet as 15. 
So we only are looking for the adjustment of 6,000. And since the books are all closed, we cannot any more entry expense account. We will just put it on our, where do we close our expenses? Since expenses are nominal account, we close it on our capital account. So the entry would now be later. So the entry would be debit, igna capital, 6,000, and then credit allowance for bad debt, 6,000, to arrive at 7,500. Okay? So for supplies, we would see that supplies has a balance of 18,000, but the current valuation is 20,000. We, so we had to increase its value into 2,000. So same, since the books are already closed, so no nominal account should be attached. So we debit supplies, 2,000, and credit Ignace Capital, 2,000. Okay? Next, fixtures and furniture, 15% depreciated. Take note, for the accumulated depreciation in our fixtures and furniture, the balance is zero. And 350% times 15 would now be 52,500. Okay, so the balance is 52,500. So we debit Ignace Capital, 52,500, and then we credit accumulated depreciation on fixtures and furniture, 52,500. So be careful. For this one, there is a balance. So the we just look for the adjustment. And since for the accumulated depreciation, no balance, and both are balance sheet accounts, so we get on the balance sheet account. Okay? So as a rule, we first adjust all the value in the book of the sole proprietor. Okay? So let's do the entry. So the entry for the first one, we say Ignaz Capital, 6,000, allowance for bad debt, 6,000, to record the adjustment for the allowance of bad debts. Next, supplies. We increase supplies by 2,000, so we debit supplies, 2,000, and credit Ignaz Capital, 2,000, so to record for the adjustment. And then, Ignaz Capital, 52,500, and then credit accumulated depreciation, 52,500 to record the adjustment for depreciation on fixtures and furnitures. So we could also do the compound entry. So we debit supplies, 52,000, 2, Ignace Capital, 56,500, allowance for bad debt, 6,000, and accumulated depreciation on fixtures and furniture, 52,500 has the same effect. And take note, for the sole proprietor, at the book of the sole proprietor, the book should still be closed. So sole proprietor should do the closing entry. And I'll just put on the link because we already discussed the closing entry. Okay, we now close all the balance sheet account of IGNA so that the sole proprietor is totally eliminated. And we would use a new books because in the partnership formation, you could use new books or you could use the book of the sole proprietor or the old partner. Okay? So when we use the when you use new books, we record entries. So we record all the all the adjustments. And for or we could only retain the books and just record the investment of Jane. Okay? Okay? So let's now do the entry. So we do our single entry to record for each of the capital. So first we debit cash hundred forty five thousand accounts receivable. 75,000, supplies, 20,000, computer equipment net. So, meaning we already deduct the accumulated depreciation of computer equipment, which is 10,000. That's to arrive at 240. To give the partnership a fresh start from its fix, from its fixed asset. Okay, we also have fixtures and furniture net, 297,500. And then we credit allowance for bad debt, 75. Salaries payable, 100,000. Unearned revenue, 21,500. And Ignace Capital, 648,500. But take note, what if the partnership will not assume the liabilities? So, we would eliminate salaries payable and unearned revenue. However, take note that Ignace Capital should be increased by 121,500. Okay? Because if it's only, the partnership wouldn't assume. But for this one, since Jane and Igna agreed to assume the liability of Igna, so then therefore, we would also include in our entry the payables. Next, we debit for Jane's capital. We have cash hundred thousand, and the land currently value or having a market value of five hundred thousand, and then Jane capital six hundred. 
Okay? So, okay, so now let's take a look of our new balance sheet for the partnership. So we now have cash, 245,145 from Igna and 100,000 from Jane. Then accounts receivable, 75,000 allowance for doubtful account or for bad debt, 75. And then supplies, 20. Computer, 240. Land, fixtures and furniture, 297,500. And then land, 500,000. Accounts payable, 100,000. Unearned revenue, 21,500. Jeans, capital, 600,000. And Ignas, capital, 648,500. So we have the asset. You already have the asset of cash, accounts receivable, allowance for doubtful account, supplies, computer equipment, fixtures and furniture, and then land. And two payable, which is 121,000 salaries payable and unearned. And capital account or the equity account of 1,248,500. Okay? So, if you have any questions, just comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, if you like this video, please help me reach out more people by hitting the subscribe and the like button below. God bless you all! If you have questions, just comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Bye-bye!